love lives here. So here at Centers for Spiritual Living Worldwide, we are working with the theme this year of Timeless Wisdom, Evolutionary Vision. And our theme for the month of March is Open to Possibilities. And today we are going to be looking at open to possibilities through the lens of commitment or commit to transformation. Now I know the C word can be a four letter word for some of us, but when we commit to our transformation, life unfolds in beautiful and perfect and wonderful ways. So we're gonna talk about that this morning. So all month long, we have been looking at the idea or we've been looking at the spiritual practice rather of visioning. Visioning is one of our core spiritual practices that we have here at Centers for Spiritual Living. Of course, we have spiritual mind treatment, also known as affirmative prayer, meditation. We have sacred study. We have sacred service. We have the um, conscious contributions or conscious giving. And one of our one of our spiritual practices is also the practice of visioning. Visioning as we've been talking about, is an opening up to spirit's highest idea of itself as our lives. It's an opening up to the highest idea, the highest vision, the highest possibility for our lives, that our highest potential, right? Live, we embolden people to live their highest potential. It is opening up to that highest potential that we have. And visioning is a way of, it is a vehicle through which the high idea makes itself known and arises in our own consciousness so that we can then be the vehicle through which our divine purpose, which is to be the presence of love, through which and individualized as us, through which it makes itself known into this plane of existence. This is what the, I, what the visioning is. And so visioning is a meditative technique. Right? It is a meditative tool, it is a meditative practice where we turn within and we listen, we anchor in where we center in our oneness and we anchor in the universal love, the unconditional love that is spirit, that is the essence and the wholeness and the fullness of who each one of us is, that we are the presence of love here on this plane of existence. We are an individualized expression of love on this plane of existence. That is our very nature. It is who and what we have come here to be. So we anchor in this unconditional love. We anchor into that. And then we begin a sacred inquiry in our meditative state. We begin a sacred inquiry and we ask, what is spirit's highest idea for my life? Or what is spirit's highest idea for our spiritual community? Or what is spirit's highest idea for our city? Or what is spirit's highest idea for this particular project that I'm working on? What is spirit's highest idea? Because spirit is infinite. And there is this infinite possibility within spirit, right? Because spirit is absolutely infinite. We are finite. We, by our very... Uh, humanhood are somewhat limited because we are appearing in form. But just because we are somewhat limited doesn't mean that we don't have access to the full realm and range of possibility, the full spectrum of possibility. So it is an opening up to receive, to be aware of, to receive the impress of spirit, to receive that high idea, an idea that perhaps is far more expansive than what we have come up with on our own. What our limited mind based on our experiences tell us that, oh, this would be a good direction to go or that would be a good direction to go. That we open up to spirit as like, what would spirit have us know? How would spirit have us walk? Where would spirit have us go? And we follow that and we allow that because we are aligning ourselves with spirit. So we align ourselves with that high idea for our lives, with that spiritual idea, with that grand possibility, that great possibility. We align ourselves by releasing those things that are in our way, which is what we talked about in week two. We 
the second week of the month, we release those things that are in our way. And how did those things get in our way? We put them there. Whether they are physical obstacles or mental obstacles, being beliefs or behaviors or patterns or habits, etc., we have put those obstacles in the way that it is preventing that free flow of spirit because we have limited it with our own ideas of separation, our own idea, our own false beliefs, our own limitations, our limited thinking. We have somehow um, put those obstacles in our way. So if we put the obstacles in the way, then who needs to remove the obstacles? You and I do. Right. So then it becomes a matter of removing the obstacles from our path. And that is the releasing, the letting go. We release the attachments. Remember, we talked about attachments and how attachments can lead to suffering, how attachments can lead to disappointment, how attachments can lead to resentment, because attachments also become expectations. And so we have the opportunity then to release those attachments to whatever, to the old way of thinking, to the old patterns, to the old beliefs. We have the opportunity to release and let go of those things that no longer serve us. And then when we let go of those things that no longer serve us, what happens is we create a spaciousness. We create a spaciousness for spirit to move right in, to move through us, to move right in. So if you think of it as, like I mentioned before, a garden hose, you turn on the faucet, but if the hose is kinked, the water is not gonna be able to flow through easily. So if we unkink the hose, then what happens? the water then flows easily, it just fills the rest of that hose where it wasn't getting to before and flows easily and effortlessly through the hose itself because there's no longer any blockages. So the water flows freely. Same thing with spirit. Spirit then, once that vacuum is created, once that spaciousness is created by what we've released, then spirit is fully, there is nothing obstructing spirit from moving fully into our experience, moving fully into um, what it is that we are living and how it is that we are being in the world and what it is that we are doing in the world. And at the same time, we have to be receptive to that because if we are not receptive, if we don't embrace spirit, if we don't embrace a new idea, if we don't embody a new idea, if we don't become the new idea, <clears throat> then we're not really being a receptive vessel or vehicle through which it can move. So there is that sense of allowing, there is that sense of embracing, that we embrace a higher idea, that we welcome it in and we draw that into us and we hug it, we bring it in close and develop an intimacy with that high idea, that new idea, that new thing that is wanting to express through us, we bring that in closer. And in so doing, we embody it. And when we embody it, remember that it, then manifests or it then expresses itself through and as us. We become the vehicles or the vessels through which this individualized expression of love is moving out into the world. We are that, we share that, we become that, and we move that and allow it to move us. So that is how we are aligning with the high idea. We have to release whatever has been called to release, let go of those things that we've been called to let go of. And then we embrace, embody, and become those things that we are called to embrace, embody, and become. And how do we find out what it is that we're to release? And how do we find out what it is to where we are embrace, embody, or become? We do that in the visioning process, in that meditative process, in that sacred inquiry. So as we are in the sacred inquiry, we listen, for what is spirit's highest idea of our lives? And we allow the wisdom that is already within, the still small voice that Allison spoke about, we allow that wisdom to emerge from within us and emerge into our consciousness, our conscious awareness. And then we ask the next question, what must I release or what must I let go of? And once again, we allow the wisdom from within to emerge into our conscious awareness. And then the same thing with embody, embrace, become. And we allow the wisdom to emerge from within. And then finally, we ask the question, is there anything else that spirit would have us know at this time? Is there anything else spirit would have us know at this time? Because sometimes 
if you look at it, that we have kind of put spirit and we've kind of put our communication in a very, in a structured format. And sometimes spirit is like, well, yeah, there's all that. There's what I, what you should, uh, what I'm thinking about is the highest idea. And, you know, here's to release and here's to embrace, but <clears throat> you know, spirit has some other information for us perhaps. And so that's why we have that open-ended question at the end saying, is there anything else I should know at this time? And for me, that is the most fun question because that is when spirit frequently lets loose um, <clears throat> and gives me some sort of more information or reveals some sort of information that sometimes makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, but I always find it humorous and I'm always curious to hear what spirit has to say in that particular uh, point. There's been times when <clears throat> I've asked the question in visioning and said, is there anything else to be known at this time? And what's come through is Kermit the Frog. And I'm like, really, Kermit the Frog? What does Kermit the Frog have to do with my spiritual evolution? I don't know, but spirit would have me know that Kermit the Frog is present this day. So I'm like, okay. And I write it down and I just allow it to be. I don't judge it. I don't try and figure it out. I don't go to my animal guide dictionary and try and figure out what a frog means or anything like that. I just accept it. Another time it was um, for months on end, I would say almost a year, right, Ed? It was probably a year. Um, <clears throat> that every single visioning, I would hear the song, I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. <laughs> every single time I was like, okay, I, I don't know what it is, right? Eventually it was revealed that it's been, it was a process of uh, spiritual development to the point because when I graduated from ministerial school, when I passed my panel, guess what? The next time we did visioning, it was gone. I was like, ah, this is what's been, it's been cooking all this time, right? Every once in a while I'll pop back in and now I know that it's like, oh, it's something that we're, it's something that we're working on, something that we're working on. Okay, got it, right? So it's a fun question. It's such a, I love that question. It's just like one of my favorites in the whole process. Yes, my animal guide dictionary. Yes, and I do have one at, at the office. Um, but one of the things about the visioning process is you never want to judge what's coming through. You don't want to try and overanalyze it. You're looking for the themes because <clears throat> as I may have mentioned to you before, I've been talking about visioning a lot this month um, in several different locations. So um, you don't want to judge it. So say a hummingbird comes through. Well, you know, if you go to your animal guide dictionary, right, the hummingbird is when you look up hummingbird, it might say that the hummingbird is about joy and fun and playfulness. And if you go somewhere else and you look at hummingbird, you're like, ooh, hummingbird is a territorial, like nasty little bird that, you know, just is willing to throw down and fight anybody. Right. So it's like, oh, so what does hummingbird mean? Well, the way we find out what hummingbird means for us, if you really have to know what hummingbird means, is that you would then take that back into visioning. You would take that back into spiritual discernment and just simply open to the possibility and say, spirit, you know, what would you have me know about hummingbird? And allow whatever is in your consciousness, allow whatever is within that still small voice, that inner wisdom. <clears throat> to rise to your conscious awareness. And you may get something or you may not get something. Either way, that's fine, right? So all of this, visioning itself is a practice that ultimately is about personal transformation. It is about your personal transformation. Whether we are visioning for, whether you're visioning for your own self, your own life, or whether you are visioning for um, a group or say the center or the city or what, whatever you are visioning for, visioning is always about, it always ultimately comes back to personal transformation. It's about personal transformation. Why is it about personal transformation? It's about personal transformation because of the work that we are being called to do in visioning, the work that is revealed through visioning 
is in the embr is in the release and in the embrace and become. Because the vision you see is already done in the mind of the divine. The vision is already complete. There, it is already there. It is already fully formed in the mind of the divine. And we are tapping into that high idea. We are accessing that high idea. But then how does that high idea come into being? It comes into being through us. We are not manifesting the vision. Remember, we don't manifest the vision. We are not making the vision happen. That's not where our work is. We're not making the vision happen. The vision is fulfilled through us. The vision already is. We don't have to make it happen. What's ours to do is to clear the pathway and to open ourselves and welcome the vision in, embody the vision, embody what is ours to embody, so that we become a clearer vessel, a clearer vehicle, a clearer, clearer transparency for the high idea to then move into form, to take form. So if we are then letting go of things, we are releasing things, we are embracing we are embodying and we are becoming. Remember, we're being and then we come to the vision. If we are being and becoming, then it stands to reason that what's going to happen, we're going to be transformed. If we let things go, if we let those attachments go, we let our limitations go and we open up to spirit and we welcome it and we embrace it, it, we embody it, it is a natural result that we will be transformed. We will be personally transformed. Each one of us is changed by being available to spirit, by making ourselves available to spirit. We are transformed and we participate in the conscious evolution of our souls, the conscious evolution of the planet. We participate in the conscious evolution of our community. We participate in the conscious evolution of our city. We are participating in the conscious evolution of our society. But that conscious evolution is happening through each one of us personally because each one of us is personally doing our work, doing our transformative work that is aligning us with the high idea of whatever it is that we are tapping into, whatever um, the focus of our visioning session is. So whatever comes through for you to release or embrace or become is yours personally to do. Yes, it might be for the collective as well, but if it's come through you, it's yours to do. It's partly your, yeah, it is yours to do. You have a part in that work for your own personal transformation, but you also have a part in that work for the transformation of the collective, the transformation of the whole as we experience it here. So when we practice visioning, what we are doing is we are committing, we are consciously intending, we are, in, we are being intentional with our commitment, but we are being intentional with our transformation. We are not just allowing something to um, come in, and an outside force, if you will, to come in and transform us and react to that, though that has happened this year as well, right? You see, transformation and change is always happening. It is always occurring. The one thing that is changeless is change. Change is always happening. It's always happening. It's never not happening. Evolution is never not happening. Transformation is never not happening. We're either intentional about it and go with it, or we are resistant to it. 
And if we are resistant to it, then that takes us back to what must we release? We must release our fears. We must release our attachments. We are called to release the doubt, worry, the uncertainty. We are called to release that and embrace faith, embrace trust, embrace wholeness, embrace the truth that God is all there is. Spirit is all there is. So spirit has got this. So we can relax into that knowing. That is what we are called to relax into. So why resist? You know, from Star Wars, resistance is futile. You will be assimilated, right? The Borg, right? So, Star Trek, excuse me. So <clears throat> got my stars wrong. Anyway, I watch both. I like them both. Um, equal opportunity stars. So resistance is futile, right? Because it's change is going to happen, right? You can either go kicking and screaming or you can go with the flow. So the opportunity here is for us to be intentional with it. Because if we are at the effect of, if we are always at the effect of change, if we are resisting change, we're always at the effect of it. Then we are in that stage one consciousness where everything is happening to me and I feel disempowered. Everything is happening to me. I have no power. I have no control. I'm always living at the effect of, I'm always living in reaction to, and that is a very disempowered place to live. It is a very uncomfortable place to live. It is a very sad place to live. It is a very angry place to live because there is nothing, there is very little sense of um, feeling of control or empowerment, right? But if we are intentional about it and we are open to our intentionality of it, then we can move into that stage two, which is things are happening by me, that I, too, am participating in the world that I'm seeing, that I can take responsibility for my own actions. I can take responsibility for my own life. I can take responsibility for the part that I play, for the way that I show up. I take responsibility for that. And in so doing, I can then begin to change how I'm experiencing things. If I take responsibility for how I'm thinking about the pandemic, for how I'm responding to the pandemic, for how I am showing up in the pandemic, then I'm no longer completely at the effect of the pandemic. I'm no longer completely at the effect of whatever is going on outside because you know what? I can at least change the way I'm thinking about it. I can change my own behaviors about it. I can change the way I feel about it. I can change the way I feel about what is happening, what is occurring. I can look for the brighter side. I can look for the positive rather than going to the negative. I can look to the benefits. I can look to the innovation. I can look to the creativity. I can see differently. I can see that what has happened here is that um, through this time frame, that our interconnectedness with all of life is really at the forefront, that we have really come into a greater awareness of our interconnectedness with all of life. And I can also appreciate and learn and become more aware of where there are still great inequities, where there is still division, where there is still a sense of separateness. And I can become aware of that. And then once I'm aware of it, I can then do something about it. That I can set the intention to transform. I can set the intention to be a change, to make changes in my thinking, in my beliefs, perhaps even in my values, and definitely in the way I show up in the world. And then when we really commit to that transformation, when we commit to being available to spirit, when we commit to our spiritual practice, when we commit to our own personal transformation, when we make that commitment, we surrender. And we realize that we are co-creating, not just with one another, that we are co-creating with one another, this collective experience, but we are co-creating with spirit itself that we are co-creating with spirit because spirit has this high idea that when we intentionally commit to our transformation, when we commit to our transformation, we are intentional about our transformation, then we are intentional about letting those things go. We are intentional about 
releasing. We are intentional about embracing, embodying, and becoming. We are intentional about aligning ourselves with spirit. And in so doing, we co-create with spirit and we become that vessel of vehicle, the transparency for the divine, allowing it to move through us into our experience. So that is the stage three of this three stages of spirit or four stages of spiritual development as we are that commitment, we are surrendering into the order of the universe. We have under, we've come to understand that we are, that the universe is ordered, that there is a law that is working always and in all ways, that it is moving through us, that it is expressing through us and that we can use it, but more importantly, that it can use us. It uses us. And so that is committing to transformation. We become transformative people. We become transformative beings, able then to work together collectively to transform the world around us, to transform our collective experience. Because we are transforming, we are aligning with, we are transmuting, we are transcending what has been before, opening to a greater possibility, opening to the greater new, opening to the highest idea, opening to more and more good, and good with a capital G, good is God, opening to that greater yet to be, that more expansive expression of love, of that unconditional love that each one of us has been called to be, that we have collectively been called to be and show up as. And that is the as, the fourth stage. The fourth stage of, of the stages of spiritual development is the as. Of clearing out the, the attachments and the personalities, a releasing of that and simply allowing ourselves to be as as the individualized self while still there falls away and takes a way back seat so that there is no separation whatsoever between us the individualized expression of love and love itself that we simply are love we are so this day i ask you What are you willing to commit to? What, what small change? It doesn't have to be big. What small change are you willing to commit to? Are you willing to embrace? What small change are you willing to commit to? To intentionally commit to, to use your intention. What are you willing to commit to that will make a positive difference in your life? Like I said, it doesn't have to be big. But the simple act of intentionally moving toward transformation, committing to transformation, will open your life in greater ways, will open the possibilities for an expanded, greater experience of love. So what are you willing to commit to today? I invite you to go ahead and put that in the chat. Whatever you're willing to commit to today, put that in your comments. What are you willing to commit to this day? Perhaps it's meditate on Mondays. You want to build a meditation practice. So you know what? Start once a week and then build. So meditation Mondays, treatment Tuesdays. <laughs> so um, for a spiritual practice, or maybe it's meatless Mondays if you're um, wanting to change your dietary um, plan that you know, it's a meatless Monday that it's something that it's it's a small change it's a small change but it is an opening so there Shawnee has an openness being more open committing to being more open for her transformation that it's an openness water Wednesday Oh, Water Wednesday. There we go. Making sure you're getting, you know, all your water in on Water Wednesday. So there you go. Taco Tuesday, Water Wednesday, right? So Meatless Monday, Taco Tuesday, Waterless, or Water water Wednesday, not Waterless. You need your water. So um, 
So what is it that you're willing to commit to for your transformation, your personal transformation? So my beloveds, uh, 10 calls a day. There we go. All right, Constance, 10 calls a day. Awesome. It's measurable. It's easy to do. 10 calls a day. I thought I saw movement. So, <laughs> all right. So that, there we go. Spiritual journaling. Great, Ken. Spiritual journaling. Right? These... These don't have to be big. We do things one step at a time, one step at a time, compassion and understanding. Earl said, from Pat, Earl says study. Yes, just one thing at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. It is about committing. It is about intentionally transforming. It is about opening and allowing and being open to the greater possibilities of our lives. And we do this, we can do this through this beautiful tool, this beautiful spiritual practice that has become a way of life for me. Because this spiritual practice is that transformative. If you allow it, it will transform your life. It absolutely will. So let us come together in consciousness, shall we? And go ahead and keep putting those things that you're willing to commit to this week. Go ahead and keep putting them in the comments. That's awesome. So right here and right now, I recognize that there just is unconditional love. It is the agape love. It is all that there is. This love is all that there is. It is consciousness itself. And this love is the thing that brought forth through itself, of itself, all of life, all of creation, because this love is the self-givingness of the one. And there is only this one. And today I choose to call it love. Recognizing that love is all there is, I recognize that it is the very who of who I am, that I am a divine emanation, impartation, a transparency for it. I'm a divine emanation and impartation of love itself, that the totality of my being is this unconditional love, that the purpose of my life is to express the presence of this love right here and right now, always and in all ways. I am inseparable from it. I am just a beautiful individualized expression of it. And as I know that this is true of me, I know that this is true of everyone present here this day. This is true of all of life, of all of creation. And this is true of everyone in our community. Each one is a divine emanation and impartation. Each one is a divine expression of this love, showing up uniquely as each one. And so I speak my word here for this beloved community, recognizing that as the presence of love, we know that it is love that meets love. It is love that is always expressing. So there is no thing to fear. There is nothing to fear. There is nothing to stand, away, stand in the way of this love expressing. So I let go of any ideas of limitation, any ideas of lack, any ideas or obstacles or encumbrances that have stood in the way of this fullest expression of love, I simply let them fall back into the nothingness from which they came. I let them return back into the nothingness. I give gratitude for them. I give gratitude for those ideas that may have kept me safe, those ideas that may have served me at one time, that may have served us at one time, but I simply allow them to fall back away now because they are no longer needed. They no longer serve the high idea that we open up to this day. They no longer serve the fullest expression of love on the planet, the fullest expression of love through and as me and through and as this beloved community. They no longer serve. So I simply let them fall away. And I open to the highest idea, the greatest expression of love, the highest potential of love as it is expressing through me, as it expresses through this community. We open to that.
and we commit to our transformation. We commit to continuing to do the work that we have been called to do, to do what is ours to do in the release and in the embrace and in the become, that we continue to do the work of bringing ourselves into greater alignment so that spirit may flow freely, like a gush of stream, a gush of water, that it may flow easily and effortlessly through and as our lives, and we are transformed in the process. So we commit to our transformation. We commit to being the transparency through which the divine makes itself known, through which love makes itself known. We commit to doing the work that is ours to do, because where we know that there is a willingness, there is a way. Nothing can stop, nothing can hinder, nothing can be in the way of spirit when we when there is a willingness in our consciousness, where there is a willingness, there is a way, and where there is a willfulness, where there is a willfulness of trying to stay attached to what has been, where there is a willfulness, there is a wall. So we crumble those walls, we release those walls, we tear them down now. We are willing to commit to our transformation. We have a willingness. We have a passion. We have a divine urge that is calling forth that we say yes to that allows for our transformation, that fosters our transformation. And so we commit to that this day. We commit to our growth. We commit to our personal transformation and our collective transformation. We commit to that now. We say yes to it, and we surrender into spirit, simply allowing it to have its way, saying, spirit, use me. Use me. I stand for you. And so I give thanks. I give thanks for this realization. I give thanks for the power and the presence of unconditional love itself. I give thanks for the truth. I give thanks for each one present here this day and their willingness to say yes, their willingness to commit, their willingness to be transformed. And so I release this word knowing that it is done. I let it be. And together we affirm. And so it is. Love